Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tex. In today's video, just a little impromptu video for those of you who have purchased my journal or maybe you're thinking about purchasing my trading journal that I released a few weeks ago, I guess. Um, I've gotten some feedback from uh, some people and I'm seeing um, kind of a reoccurring theme of mistakes that people are making with the journal and hopefully this video will help clarify some of those. Now, when you first download the package, uh, there's gonna be two Excel files in there. Um, as of the recording of this video, we're on version 1.2, but you'll see one of them is denoted as a demo. That just has some sample trades in it so that you can play around with the data and learn how to use the journal. But when you're ready to get started with your own journal, this is gonna be the file that you wanna open. Now, the first thing I'd recommend you do is after you extract the zip package or whatever to your desktop and you have this folder open here, just right click, go to new, and open up a new folder and we can just call this backup, okay? And then the first thing that I would do is just right click and drag this file right over there into that backup, click copy, and now you have backed up this file here. And I would recommend you do that for your personal journal once you get it all set up every single day before you go in and start entering new trades in for the next day, okay? That way you always have a backup of your journal. In case you mess something up, you can always easily revert back. Now, when you first open up the file, it's gonna look like this, okay? You can see that there's protected view warning is across the top because you downloaded this from the internet. You have to click enable editing to be able to start using the journal. And that's gonna open it up into editing mode here. And then you're also gonna have a security warning saying that macros have been disabled. You have to click enable content and you can disregard this uh, disclaimer right here across the top as well. Um, I would actually also recommend that you um, uh, collapse your, your ribbon up here. You're, you're not going to need that. So you can do that. There's a little arrow here. If you click that, it's going to collapse the ribbon, going to get a lot of screen real estate back. Now, when you first open your, your journal, you have to get it set up before you do anything with it. So don't click this little refresh icon here. If you've already done that, close it down, don't save it and reopen uh, the journal and get started from scratch. So we're going to go to the settings page and this is what you have to do first. You have to get your accounts set up and then you can uh, set up your your setup names, your time frames, and um, your entry, exit process, trade management, uh, emotions, and trading errors. All of the the data that you care to track over here, we need to go ahead and get all of that set up before you start putting trades into the journal. Now you can track up to four different accounts, and you can give each of your accounts a unique name. So I just use generic account one, account two, account three, account four. You can keep those, or you can change those. So let's say that you only have one trading account. You're going to highlight all of these cells here and click the delete key on your key. Keyboard. Let's say that your trading account is with E-Trade, so you might want to call it E-Trade. Uh, maybe it's your day trading account, you'll call it day. It really doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. Just give it a unique name and then enter in your uh, your account balance. Okay, so let's say that this account is $5,000. Now what that has done is if we go to the dashboard here and we scroll over here and click on new trade, it's going to pop open this little user form and you'll see for the account dropdown, it is now showing us our unique account name that we created over on the settings page. All right. So let's go back over to our settings page here. Let me maximize the window. Go back over to our settings page. Let's say that we actually have a swing account too. So we'll maybe call that swing. And let's say we have $10,000 in that account. Okay. Now if we go back to the dashboard and we click on new trade, you can see the user form here. Now that swing account has been added. So whatever name you give your account, whatever unique name you give your account, it's gonna automatically update the drop-down menus here on this user form. Um, additionally, if you go to the trades page where the data is actually stored for the account column, you'll see that this drop-down menu has also been updated to reflect your unique account name. So it's very important that we go ahead and set up our unique account names and go ahead and uh, put your beginning balance for each of those accounts before any trades are entered into the journal. And we do that from the get-go. Okay, so let's go get those set up first. Then you can come over here and uh, modify the setup names to whatever you like to trade. If you only trade you know, three setups, you could delete everything here on the bottom and change the names of these three setups here. Um, if you only trade a handful of time frames, you can just delete what you don't need. And uh, you know, starting from the first cell, working your way down, give uh, each time frame a unique name for whatever you like to track. And then same thing for this stuff over here, entry process, exit process, trade management, and like trading errors or emotions, whatever you would care to track, this is all really optional. If you want to track this type of stuff, 
change these names here, and then uh, we can go ahead and start putting trades into the journal. Really quickly before we do that, the market performance metric here is for you to be able to track your performance to the S&P 500 or any other index that you would like to track. So in order for this feature to fully work, you do have to be using Office 365, basically an Excel version that supports the stock feature. So you'll know if, that's, if you have that, because this will say S&P 500 index and you'll be able to click this little building here and you get a little drop down with some uh, some previous closed prices, open price, et cetera, on that particular index. So the way that this works is all you're gonna do is enter in the last closing price for the S&P 500 as of the first date that you're gonna put trades into the journal. So if you're gonna go and put trades into the journal for um, you know February 1st of 2022 and onwards, then you would enter the whatever the closing price for the S&P 500 was on uh, February 1st. I don't remember what that is, but let's just guess it was like 4,500, um, you know, something like that. Whatever that closing price is for that date. So you would enter that there and you would never change this again, okay? That is going to tell you over here on the dashboard, how, percentage-wise, how the market has performed from that date. Okay, and then you'll be able to see your return from all of your trading activity and you'll be able to see if you're beating the market over that same time period or not. Okay, that's it. Now, if you want to track a different index here and your uh, Excel does support the stock market feature, you can type in the ticker symbol for that index. So if you wanted to track the Indian stock market, the Nifty 50, if you just type in the ticker symbol and press enter, you'll see that it has automatically updated to the Nifty 50. And then uh, likewise, you would enter in whatever the closing price for the Nifty 50 was as of your first trade date in the journal. So we'll just go back to the S&P 500 um, and that is done. Now let's go to the trades page. And this is where you're going to go ahead and enter your first trade into the journal. Now you can go ahead and just enter your trade into the journal manually right here on this row, right? You're just gonna come in here and select your account name. There's your two unique account names. You select your account. Uh, you come over here and you put the ticker symbol in. Let's say that you traded uh, SPX, right? You just type in that tipper, ticker symbol and then you go over to the open date field. Now this is, this is important here, guys. The data formatting for this journal is using American date format. So that is the month, the day, the year, and then the time. And it's really important that you enter the date format just like this or it is not going to work, okay? Uh, I apologize, but just with limitations of Excel, for right now, it has to it has to be this way for the data model to work. I'm trying to work out a better version for international people, but um, for right now, it does need to work this way, okay? Now, what you can do here is you can go ahead and go through here and enter in your first trade. It's very important that you enter your first trade into this first row here. The reason that this row is here and that it says edit this first row you know, for your for your first trade is because there are formulas in the first two columns here, okay? And then over here on the last three columns, these have formulas. So if we delete this row, we're going to delete these formulas and you're going to break the whole spreadsheet. All right. So only for your first trade, you need to edit this first row by going in and putting your data into it. Now, alternatively, instead of actually editing this row in a traditional spreadsheet uh, manner, you can click this add edit button here. Um, you can also access it from the dashboard. If you just click on edit trade and we look, here is that same row of data. If you highlight that, it's already highlighted, click on edit. It's gonna open up this user form here and we can go through the motions of entering our first trade into the journal. So we select our account, say it's our day trade account. We hit tab, we go over here to the date and time field. Again, it is month, day, year, and the time. So let's say that we're entering this in for today, which is 2-24, so February 24 of 22 at uh, let's say 1 p.m. so we would type in 1300 or you could do uh, 1 p.m. either one okay so let's just say we're gonna do the 1300 we'll hit tab how long were you in the trade let's say we're in the trade for 15 minutes we can use the rocker or we can actually just come in here and manually type in whatever that time in minutes that we were in the trade press tab we come down enter enter the ticker symbol uh, for the strike and spread, if you're trading something like uh, crypto or shares of a stock, obviously there is no strike or spread, so you could just say NA. It doesn't matter what you put here. This is for your own reference. Now, if you are trading options, 
you would just simply put in uh, whatever the strike or spread that you traded is, right? So maybe a 4,300 strike, you could say February 25 for the expiration. Or if you're trading something like a spread, an option spread, you could say 4,300 call vertical February 25 expiration, okay? And then obviously you would come down here and select the instrument type as a spread. Uh, if you're just trading naked contracts, you might want to just track the strike and maybe the expiration. You could do that. And then you would say, you know, this was a call or this was a put. Okay. And then you choose whether you were long or short. You choose the setup. You can see here's our three unique setups. You choose your time frame, how many shares or contracts that you traded, what was the total dollar risk on the trade. So if you were risking a total of $300 on this trade, that was going to be your max loss on this trade. That is the amount you would put here. You just put the numerical amount without a dollar sign. And what was your gross return on the trade? If you if you had a one hour loss on the trade, then that means you lost what you were planning to risk. You lost $300. If you had a two hour win on the trade, then you made double what you were planning to risk, right? So you made $600. So put your gross return here. And then here you can put in your fees and commissions. Let's say that you had... Um, I don't know, $3.90 in fees and commissions. Now you could go ahead and submit this trade just like that. This over here is optional, but if you want to track things like your entry process, you can go through the motions here. You can say that your target was hit, you exited because of time, stop loss, profit stop, discretion, et cetera. Let's say that our target was hit. How did we manage the trade? We followed the plan. And did we have any trading errors? Let's say no. The score is an STB scoring system that we use, but you could look at this like criteria. How many reasons did you have to take the trade? If there was five, five criteria to take the trade, you know, put a five there. This is optional if you want to track this. And then you can leave any um, any trading notes here, whatever you wanted to. If you wanted to make a note of every single execution for this trade, every, you know, if you had three buys and three sells or one buy and three sells, you can make note of all of those executions here if you'd like. Um, otherwise, click on update confirm and you'll see that that trade has been updated here on this first row if we close this we go to the trades page you can see that the first row here on the table has all of our data in it the last three columns have the formulas working correctly so we never want to delete these last three columns over here we never want to delete these first two columns over here everything looks good we are now safe to go to the dashboard and refresh the data model now you have to do that in order for the dashboard here to update and as you can see once the data model updates it is now reflecting that one trade that we have put into the journal now going forward if we go to edit trade from the same window here to enter new trades in, we just click on new trade and we go through the same process uh, as we did before, but this time we're entering a new trade into the journal versus having to edit that first row. So only for your first trade that you put into the journal, you have to edit that first row. Alternatively, you can just go straight to the new trade form right here on the dashboard and go ahead and go through the motions of entering in your first trade or your, I'm sorry, your, your second trade, your third trade, all, you know, all of your new trades going forward, you just go through the new trade form you can enter in several trades and then you can come refresh your data model. You don't have to refresh the data model after entering every single trade into the journal. You could enter three new trades into the journal. Uh, say you took three trades on the day, you could go ahead and enter those three trades into the journal and then refresh your data model. Then don't forget to save your Excel file and back it up every single day. Okay, so hopefully that clears up some confusion. Um, also, don't forget on the help page, there's a lot of information here, step-by-step -step instructions, walking you through everything that I just explained. And uh, we talk about a couple of bugs with the platform here on the bottom. So just a quick mention of this. Um, if you delete a trade in the middle of the table, it does break the formula in the far right column. Let me show you very quickly what happens. If you go to the trades page here, right, we have this one trade in the journal. Uh, let me just pause it real quick. I'll put another uh, few trades in and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so here we are looking at a journal that has a bunch of trades in it. So if I come in here and click on add edit, and I just pick any trade here, and I click on delete, it's gonna ask me to confirm I wanna delete the trade, click on yes, that trade has been deleted. But if we come over to the far right of the table, you can see that every row below the one that we deleted, this formula has been broken, okay? It's clearly, it says, you know, reference. It's trying to reference something that isn't there. So we come to the last cell where the formula is working and we just uh, see there's a little um, little box right here on the far right bottom corner of this little uh, cell. You're just gonna click that and drag it down one and it should autofill all the way to the bottom of the table. If it doesn't, 
what you can do is just drag it manually all the way to the bottom of the table, just like that, okay? Now, what you wanna see here is that that reference error has, uh, has disappeared and that you can see that uh, you, know, you have numerical values here. This is your accumulative return on your trading activities, okay? It's very important that if you do delete a trade in the middle of the table that you fix that before you go over to the dashboard and you try to refresh the data model. Uh, the only other bug is that if you try to select a month here that doesn't have any trade data, you can see that March 8th is the last date that has any trade data in the journal. So if I select the month of July, there's no data to show for the month of July. So the dashboard basically goes blank here. But if we clear this filter, everything comes back, but you can see things like this chart has been changed um, and the conditional formatting has changed. Like these negative value bars here should be red. Uh, and it has broken that, okay? So it doesn't completely break the journal, but it does kind of break a few things like the conditional formatting here on the dashboard. Uh, it's an, an annoying bug that I can't seem to figure out, but just be aware of that. If you accidentally select a month that doesn't have any data in it, when you clear that filter out, it's gonna break the conditional formatting on these charts. That's why it's a good idea to just keep a backup file of your journal every single day. That way, if you break something or whatever, you can easily revert back to a previous uh, copy of your journal. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Again, I appreciate all the support. If you purchased the journal or you're thinking about it, uh, if you have any uh, further problems beyond this video, please reach out to me through email. I've been helping everyone out who reached out and uh, we'll make sure we get you up and running. Okay, thanks a lot, guys.